This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and today we have a case of an elderly man who has peripheral corneal degeneration resulting in a localized severe thinning. It's a non-inflammatory thinning of the cornea, looks more likely to be a tedious marginal degeneration. He's just come for cataract surgery. The other eye has a similar feature but the corneal thinning is not so severe and he's already pseudophagic in this eye and his patient is quite happy. Patient has a pre-existing astigmatism of uh, about two diopters and the patient is okay with wearing glasses for the astigmatism and he cannot afford any toric intraocular lens. The primary concern for me for this surgery is the corneal thinning. I'm worried about the perforation, whether it can happen during the surgery, especially when doing fake emulsification because intraocular pressure would be reasonably high and although it is very well aware that spontaneous perforation of corneal thinning, especially in terians, is uncommon. So that was one good thing, but I was uh, still concerned because during fake emulsification, there is always a raise in pressure and I was concerned about uh, the perforation. Of course, if required, we always need to do a strengthening a graft procedure and then take the patient for surgery. But this patient was reluctant to travel to a, a far off place to get that procedure done and he was uh, insisting for just a removal of the cataract. And the main concern for me was the risk of perforation intraoperatively. The safer option here would be to do a manual small gene cataract surgery because it is a relatively low pressure surgery where the chances of the pressure building up in intraoperatively are very less. So that was one option but I decided to go ahead with fake emulsification and use the principle of low pressure surgery in this eye. Let's see how the things turn out. So the primary principle which I'm going to follow is to reduce the bottle height here. I don't want to work anywhere above the 50 centimeter bottle height. I'm using the infinity machine and uh, the typical setting would be for me to operate at 90 centimeters or 100 centimeters of bottle height. But in this case, I'm consciously decreasing the bottle height to around 40 centimeters and 50 centimeters during the various stages of the surgery. I would consciously decided to do a stop and chop technique because while trenching we anyway require a low bottle height and even while chopping and quadrant removal I'm going to reduce the bottle height in other settings and uh, as will be discussed during the video. So as I'm sculpting here the nucleus is stabilized with the chopper as the trench is being created. This helps us to get a firmer grip on the nucleus and the nucleus is much more stable as the trenching is being done. The aim is to create around 80% depth. And once I have sufficiently deep groove, the lateral separation is performed to separate the two hemineucleus. It's important to place the second instrument much more posteriorly so that less stress is required to crack this thick posterior plate. The nucleus is rotated and each of these uh, fragments is now being divided into smaller fragments. Now during this chop setting, I am using bottle height of about 50 centimeters from the standard 90 or 100 centimeters which I would use for my routine cases. And to compensate for this low bottle height, I also reduced my vacuum from 600 to 300 and flow rate from 40 to 30. So I'm using low vacuum and low flow rate along with a low bottle height to maintain the chamber stability as the nucleus is being divided. So once we have all the smaller fragments, I switch to the quadrant removal mode where I'm going to use torsional energy to emulsify all these fragments. Again important to note here is the bottle height. So I'm careful to ensure that the pressure in the antechamber is not too high and so far so good the chamber stability is not compromised at the same time we're not working under extreme high pressure so this is a conventional gravity system which i'm using uh, to work at a lower pressure not the uh, centurion with an inbuilt active fluidic system so the point here is uh, our concern is to operate at a low iop the message here is that even with a gravity-based machine like the Infinity, we can operate under a low bottle height 
of course by compensating by decreasing the flow rate and vacuum so we could emulsify the nucleus in a very controlled manner without any surge with good chamber stability even with this low bottle height the cortex is aspirated again using a slightly lower bottle height and lower aspiration parameters the planned multi piece intraocular lens is being implanted into the pack the ovd both in front and behind the intraocular lens is uh, irrigated out and the wounds are hydrated that's it the case is done At the end of the surgery you know it was a sigh of a relief and uh, these are the first day post op pictures the cornea is clear and the uh, this is the area of the corneal thinning which was quite intimidating and uh, i was uh, concerned but using the low pressure system to operate thankfully did not cause any uh, intraoperative perforation so this was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful